What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with another reaction and in this one we have how Andaman and Nico Barr's military strategy is making India unbeatable. So excited to get into this and hear about this strategy that makes India unbeatable. But before we do, if you would like to support the channel by becoming a member, all you gotta do is smash that join button and receive exclusive benefits that I know you would enjoy. And without further ado, Let's hear about this strategy. साथियों, अंडमार और निकोबार के 12 आइलैंड्स में हाई इंपैक्ट प्रोजेक्ट का विस्तार किया जा रहा है। With China expanding its presence in the Indian Ocean, India has formulated a new maritime approach to retain its prominence in the region. It's a global on, highway. Man. It's a highway through which passes a majority of the uh, oil and, and cargo that uh, goes from the Indian Ocean to the Pacific. Andaman and Nicobar Islands has the potential of being a key base for projection of power in the Indian oh Ocean. My. If you look at the uh, sort of geopolitical games that are being played in the Indo-Pacific region, most of these games today are being actually played in the Indian Ocean region. The Indian Ocean, which remained quiet for some time after the Cold War, has re-emerged as a critical theatre for strategic competition. Hi everybody! The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are by far one of the most neglected regions of India. And while mm. most of us only know them as tourist destination, very few of us know that if utilized properly, these islands can turn India into one of the most powerful regions in the world. But in spite of being such a crucial part of India, just like the Northeast, the government of India has barely done anything to empower these islands and to use them to gain a geopolitical advantage on the world. However, in 2015, the government came out with a grand announcement to invest 10,000 crores into transforming the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Oh. This is expected to turn them into an economic engine as well as a critical military touchpoint. And if executed as stated, it will be a historic upgrade in the geopolitical power of India. So in this episode of the Geopolitical Dang, series, smart. let's try to understand why is the Andaman and Nicobar Islands so so important for India? How will okay. it give India a superpower in geopolitics? And most importantly, what are the study materials to help you understand the value of these neglected islands of India? This video let's is brought to you by Skillshare. People, we have been upgrading. Let's skip the Skillshare sponsor. Get to the island. Thousand people to click on the link will get one month of free trial on Skillshare. So as usual, let's start from the basics and try to understand the basic geography of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. People, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are two groups of islands covering an area of 8,249 square kilometers. Ah, the entire island chain Dude. consists of 836 islands, out of which 38 are permanently inhabited by a population of 4.3 lakh people. Okay. These islands are governed as a single union territory by the central government of India through the Andaman Nicobar administration. Now in Andaman, out of 300 islands, the main island we have are the North, Middle and South Andaman, which are collectively okay. known as Great Andaman. In Nicobar, Great we have 19 islands and the most prominent Dang. islands are the Kar Nicobar in the north, Kamurta, Kachal and Nankavari in the center so of the chain from and other. Great Nicobar in the south. This is the basic geography of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now the question over here is, what is so special about these tiny islands and how can these islands make India more powerful? Well, for starters, if you remember from our China episode, you know that under the BRI initiative, China is indirectly surrounding India. They have taken yeah. over the Hambantota port in Sri Lanka, the Gwadar port in Pakistan, the Koek Few port in Myanmar and Dawei port in Myanmar for a pipeline to mainland Crazy. China. Then down south, Indonesia is getting cozy with China where joint military drills were being conducted. Oh wow! And if you see closely, you will know that Andaman and Nicobar Islands are so strategically located that out of these five touch points of China, four of oh. them fall in the missile range from Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Dang! While Myanmar is just six. That is gigantically strategic. That is perfectly strategic. 100 kilometers away, Hamban Tota is 1400 kilometers away, and Indonesia is just 420 kilometers away. Secondly, these islands are also a very, very important part of a counter strategy that India is planning against the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. The first mm. is a necklace of diamond strategy, which we already spoke about in the previous yes. episode. Heard and about the this second one. is something called the double 
fish hook oh, strategy. Have not heard about this is this nothing one. but a maritime strategy to strengthen India's military hold in the Indian Ocean. So let's try to understand this double fish hook strategy properly and how Andaman and Nicobar Islands are extremely critical for it. The first hook that we have starts from the Andaman and Nicobar Islands extends to Sabhang Boat in Indonesia, Coco Islands oh. in Australia and ending at Diego Garcia which is the US mm. military base in Chagos Islands. And yes. each of these entities have an agreement with India which includes oh. a port project agreement with Indonesia, mutual logistics support agreement with Australia which basically says that India and Australia can use each other's facilities. And lastly, we have an agreement with the US called the Logistics Exchange Memorandum of Agreement which again enables both sides to use each other's facilities. The second nice. hook starts from the Dukum port in Oman, extends to French territories in the Reunion Islands and then to Mauritius. And if you draw a connecting line with oh. all these points, you will see that even oh, this hook wow. ends at Diego Garcia. And even for this hook, Dang. we have military agreements with Oman, France and Mauritius by which we have a very strong hold over the Indian Ocean. This is the second reason why the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are super super important for I'm it. I'm telling you, India ain't playing no games out here. India is staying on top of things from a strategic standpoint. They will not let China have an advantage. They want to place their stuff in strategic positions. Okay, well, we can do the same. They will not allow them to have that advantage over them. India. And this brings me to the third reason, that is choke points. Now, if you remember from our China video, you know that the closest way for the oil tankers of China to go from Middle East to China is through this passage called the Strait of Malacca. Yes. This falls within the territorial waters of Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore. And close to 40% of the entire world's trade passes through this region with That's more than 50,000 merchant ships using it every single year. And more importantly, close to 70% of China's petroleum and LNG exports are shipped through this Strait of Malacca and 60% of China's trade flows are moved through this strait and the South China Sea. Now, if you see closely, the Great Nicobar Island is located oh, literally at the throat of Malacca because of which it can choke the trade of China and cut its oil imports. Dang. This is what makes China extremely vulnerable to Indian dominance. I now, see. when we speak about Indian defense, some people think that this defense is meant for war with China. But I got to tell you that that is a very stupid way to understand geopolitics because you okay. see, when a country establishes its military presence all across the world, it establishes deterrence which prevents warfare. A classic facts, 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 and facts. I completely agree with that statement. When a country establishes uh, military presences all over the world, right, it is not to go to war. It is to deter people from even wanting to go to war. The example of the same is the US deterrence factor with Taiwan in the China-Taiwan conflict. Mm. President Biden has said he would be willing to use force to defend Taiwan and that the US stands with other nations to make sure China cannot use force in the region. What we've seen and what is of real concern to us is in increasingly aggressive actions by the government in Beijing uh, directed at Taiwan, uh, raising tensions in the Straits. U.S. warships sail through the sensitive Taiwan Strait. Beijing has called this a deliberate attempt to harm peace and stability in the region. We have a commitment uh, to Taiwan under the Taiwan Relations Act, uh, a bipartisan commitment that's existed for, for many, many years to make sure that Taiwan has the ability to defend itself and to make sure uh, that we're sustaining peace and security in the Western Pacific. But Beijing sees this as a sign of support to Taiwan. We stand behind uh, those commitments and all I can tell you is it would be a serious mistake uh, for anyone to try to change the existing status quo by force. Hey, all I can tell you is it would be a serious mistake, China, for anyone to try to change the existing status quo by force because you don't, you don't want this smoke. You, you don't want to do it by force. The deterrence factor we hear is that since Taiwan has the backing of US and US has a very close alliance with Singapore, if China attacks Taiwan, US and Singapore will cut off China's oil supply by blocking the Strait of Malacca. Dang. So this deterrence factor alone is enough for China to stay away from Taiwan. Similarly, yeah. 
whether it's the double fish hook strategy or getting closer to the choke points, they are mere deterrence factors that are more about protecting you from warfare rather than during warfare. These are the three Artillery. military reasons why the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are extremely important to India. And this brings me to part two, which is the okay. economic importance of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. In this context, the first thing India is capable of doing is attracting a billion dollar market and give stiff competition to both the Singapore and Colombo ports. God this can dang, be done by turning these really? islands into something called the Transshipment Hub. What is Transshipment Hub? It's nothing but an intermediary point wherein ships can load and unload their cargo. And if you remember from our Dubai episode, Dubai became an important transshipment hub because of its deep water port called the Jabal Ali port. And because of that today, the Jabal Ali port brings in billions of dollars as income for the Emirate of Dubai. So transshipment hub is an extremely profitable and high income venture for any government. Similarly, yeah. if you see, Singapore is a critical transshipment hub near the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Singapore port alone handled 37.2 million TEUs of containers and 626.2 million tons of cargo in 2019 alone. And as a result of these developments, today, the maritime industry of Singapore brings in billions of dollars in revenue and this industry alone contributes to 7% of its entire GDP. Yeah, and the fun fact hey. over here is that the Great Jeez. Nicobar Island alone, which is just one of these islands in the entire chain, that itself is bigger than the area of Singapore and Dubai city combined. In fact, it has a coastline really? of more than 900 kilometers long, which is an invaluable asset. And lastly, yeah, like I said before, invaluable. more than 40% of the entire world's trade passes from this region, which includes trades worth trillions of dollars. As a result, it becomes one of the perfect spots to become a transshipment hub. And if yeah. developed well, it could go on to become one of the busiest ports in the world. But, but, Dang. but, the problem we hear is that to become a transshipment hub, you need extremely capable facilities like a deep water port, storage facilities, mm. internet connectivity, coal storage facilities and many more infrastructural elements that act as a supporting element for the maritime industry. So yes. this entire maritime industry is not just one port but an entire ecosystem in itself. But wow. unfortunately, as I said before, just like the Northeast, the governments have not recognized the strategic importance of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. But the good news is that recently, the government of India has planned to invest 10,000 crores to turn it into a transshipment hub of the world. And if you look at the list of all the elements that India is actually building for the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, it's absolutely mind boggling. Firstly, we have a 2,300 kilometer undersea optical fiber network. This is an investment worth 1,224 crores and it will deliver a bandwidth of 400 gigabits from Ooh. Chennai and Port Blair and 200 gigabits from Port Blair to other islands. Nice. Then we have the Veer Savarkar International Airport under process which will have a capacity to handle more than 10 million passengers. Apart yeah. from that, we have a railway project worth 2400 crores, 13 mega development projects worth 6300 crores which will enable connectivity, wow. a 50 megawatt gas based power plant and a 100 megawatt solar power plant. Nah, All India, now I'm telling you, India is is progressing at such a race right now is looking ahead to the future right now is innovating like crazy right now and it's i love the way he does these videos it's incredible that the Andaman and nicobar islands uh are can not only use be used as a choke point but now you're starting to invest infrastructure you're starting to invest money for infrastructure um and turn it and it can be a very incredible economic investment for India, these islands can, and that's that's truly special to look at it from that aspect as well. Of which will transform Andaman and Nicobar Islands into one of the most developed, connected, and secured regions of India. And as far as the military projects are concerned, they are a little complex, so I'll give you a link in the description. This okay. is what India is doing to turn Andaman and Nicobar Islands into one of the most strategic and economically productive regions of India. So That's at crazy. the end of the day, the plans do look ambitious, practical and promising. But just like any other major project, it's completely up to the government on how and when they actually complete the execution of all these steps. Yeah. If this is very, very clear to you, let's move on to the study materials. The first thing that I'm attaching is the same PDF that I attached in the previous episode, which talks about the- uh, I probably won't go through the study materials, but I think that's uh, truly, truly incredible. I think the strategy behind the, these islands 
is absolutely phenomenal and cannot be un overlooked. The double fish hook strategy is incredible. I think this will, uh, them having that presence in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, but them also having the uh, necklace of diamonds strategy, I think these are big deterrents for China into where China will not attack India because they have these strategic placements. And then they also have very strategic relationships. So... It just would not be smart of China to attack India. So I think it's enough deterrence uh, and then turning those islands economically uh, into something that can benefit your country and help your GDP continue to grow. That's incredible. That's sensational. Uh, y'all let me know y'all thoughts in the comment section. Very interesting hearing what you guys have to say. That's all we have for today. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to subscribe. Get a video a thumbs up. Check out that next one. We'll see you guys next time.